Hey guys, so I love how much history there is in Harry Potter. There's always a backstory to everything and I genuinely enjoy looking into the generations of the past, Harry's parents especially, and discovering just what went on during those days in Hogwarts, two decades before the original timeline began in 1991. Something that still interests me and I hope still interests you is the love triangle involving Lily Evans, James Potter and Severus Snape. I believe it's a story as interesting as Annie and it's definitely noteworthy to mention that Lily at one point almost chose Snape over James until future events changed all of that. If you want to know how and why, we'll keep watching to find out. So, it's no secret that Lily Evans and Severus Snape were once very close friends, and possibly more, something we never actually got to discover as time went on. What's important to remember is the fact that Snape was a big part of Lily's childhood and development. He was the first person to show Lily the beauty of magic, he told her all about Hogwarts and the houses. Lily and her parents were obviously told about the existence of magic from a ministry representative, but Snape made it sound and appear a lot more beautiful. He also reminded Lily not to feel guilty about being special, which is the complete opposite of how her sister Petunia loved to make her feel. The two built a very close bond over the years and unbeknownst to Snape, there was a lot of potential for a romance to blossom. The trouble is, he didn't allow himself to believe that such a desire, such a dream could come true. In reality, Lily noticed everything especially how Snape's supposed or expected morals went out a window when it came to her. For example, he wanted Lily to be in Slytherin with him as he thought it was the most promising house, completely disregarding the fact that Lily was muggle-born and had zero chance of ever being sorted there, due to the house's namesake being strongly against having muggle-borns accepted into the school altogether. The Sorting Hat does take into account the Founder's core beliefs. As we know from the book, very quickly after arriving at Hogwarts and being sorted into Slytherin, Snape began associating with the likes of Malfoy, Avery and Mulciber, all three of them future Death Eaters and believers in the anti-Mughal pureblood supremacist rhetoric of that organisation. Severus made fun of the other Muggleborns with his fellow Slytherin bullies, adhering to peer pressure of course. Yet his best friend and the woman he loved was a Muggleborn herself and he'd have done anything for her. What he didn't know is that it was he himself who began to alienate Lily when he turned to the Dark Arts. Snape always had time for Lily, whereas Lily made time for Snape. There's a big difference. The Dark Arts made Snape feel like he was important. It gave him a feeling of power. Don't forget, he invented several spells that are still used today, like Levi Corpus or the deadly Sectum Sempra. I think it was pretty obvious to Lily that Snape's intense interest in her was definitely coming from a place as more than friends, but Lily was very headstrong and determined to make the best of her experience at Hogwarts. She just didn't want a relationship at any point. She rejected James Potter time and time again, all throughout their early years. She looked at him as the lowest of the low due to his bullying behaviour. It was actually through his persistence that even got Lily to talk to him civilly. Severus was beginning to shift in the opposite direction, but never letting his appreciation for Lily go astray. I think it's pretty clear that the turning point for Snape and Lily was the day he lashed out at her after being on the end of one of James's repetitive bullying attacks. James certainly knew how to bring the worst out of Snape, which is why I think he despised him even further. He was singled out quite a lot by the four boys, Sirius and James in particular leading the charge. And it was always unfair odds. Credit to Snape, he fought them off quite well, most of the time, but that day in particular seen Severus completely humiliated beyond any reasonable measure. He permanently pushed Lily away when he called her a filthy mudblood, something even James was taken aback by. That day was a day to forget for everyone involved 
However, it was also the day that would see Snape erased from the picture for good. There was nothing he could have said, because the truth is, James's behaviour was appalling and disgusting, and was something that Lily had also noticed over the years, and I feel she wasn't ever going to give him the time of day until Snape outdone him with the uncalled for, the unnecessary personal attack on the girl he loved, his very own best friend. That's the moment I believe gave James a chance in the first place. Lily would have always had Snape in her life, and vice versa. She knew how much James and Snape despised each other, and for Snape's sake, I don't think she'd have even allowed James in the picture. She had morals. Her long-term friendship would always come before anything else. Even if it was some other kind of argument, I think she'd have forgiven him, but unfortunately Snape went and done the one thing he could never take back. And there's just no coming back from such a derogatory term as mudblood, especially as it hurt Lily deeply. When she later confronts him about it, she says the following to him. You call everyone of my birth mudblood, Severus. Why should I be any different? So this means it was not the first time that Snape had used that word, but merely the first time he had used it towards her. After that argument, she makes it clear that their friendship is over. There seems to have been some underlying chemistry between Snape and Lily, but he sealed his own fate. He learned that day that failure to control your actions can have severe consequences. Lily opened up and got to know James, falling in love with him. However, Lily did not immediately run to James after she told Snape that they could no longer be friends. It took quite some time for them to begin dating, and in that intervening time, James grew up. He stopped jinxing people in the hallways for the fun of it, and he got over himself a little bit. At the same time, the battle lines were being drawn. The delineation between those who would become Death Eaters and those who would set themselves against them began growing clearer. Snape was noted for having a flair for the dark arts, James for hating dark magic and anyone who used it. The saddest part is that, despite losing Lily for good, Severus still gave his heart to her in the end. He dedicated his life to loving her, and only her. He never met anyone else, he never showed the slightest interest in anyone, it was always and only Lily. I really feel like losing Lily for Snape ended up pushing him further into the dark arts, he seemed like the type of person to live for another or for a cause. He must have felt so low and lonely that when the opportunity presented itself to unleash the anger he felt, he took it. He was made feel wanted, important. Voldemort himself even rated Snape very highly and Snape in return was loyal to him. He informed him of the prophecy, he didn't have to, and Voldemort would have met his match down the line. Snape's deepest insecurity was simply wanting to be valued. Anyway guys, with that being said, that is my video on how Lily Potter almost chose Severus Snape over James Potter. As usual, please let me know your opinion in the comment section down below. I have a feeling there might be some debate on this matter. Make sure to check out my social media as I've said, and most importantly, have a great day, and I'll see you all in the next video. Thank you so much for watching, I truly truly appreciate your support. Everyone, notifications of uploads are more important than ever, so please if you haven't already, turn those notifications on to make sure you're notified the moment my video goes live. Making videos is what I love to do, it's my dream and my passion, however it does cost time and money to produce this content, so if you have a dollar to spare to support me on Patreon, in exchange for some exclusive unseen content, then you can click the Patreon link below or at the end of this video. Please only support me if you can afford it. And make sure to follow me on Instagram at InstaDNJ and on Twitter at Potter Folklore. Check out my other videos appearing on screen and please make sure, most importantly, to hit that subscribe button. Thanks again everyone and please have a great day.